All right, and a good Sunday to you. Welcome to another episode of JD's uh, Deep Cut Sunday Tracks. Again, talking about you know obscure songs from obscure bands, um, not so obscure bands. Okay? Today we got a special one, I think. Um, as you know, I've been focusing on 70s, uh, you know, music era, 70s bands. Uh, today, technically, um, it is a band that that still had had some influence on the 70s, did material in the 70s, beginning, beginning of the 70s at least. Uh, this band came out in the mid-60s, was a progenitor of the uh, psychedelic dark movement. Um, obscure band in general, uh, they reached cult status, um, became bigger after after they uh, they no longer were together. Um, you might have a clue here who I'm talking about. Uh, the Velvet Underground, okay? Um, the Velvet Underground came out in 60, early 65, 66. Um, had some some success, um, Underground, Velvet Underground, uh, no pun intended there. But um, never got, you know, as big as, you know, the Birds, you know, the other psychedelic bands that were around. Um, you know, Who Stuff, uh, you know, Rolling Stones, of course. But uh, they do have a really, really good history. Um, they had a lot of songs, you know, that they released. Uh, three albums, I think, uh, when they were together. Uh, going to talk about one of their songs, uh, Obscure Track, um, that was actually on their last album they released. Okay, we're talking about the album Loaded, okay? Been trying to find the uh, record of this one pretty hard, but Loaded came out in, uh, in 1970. It was the last album they did um, as a band. Good history on this album. Uh, this album was released, and Lou Reed had already left the band. Okay, uh, pretty interesting there. But to me, my favorite album um, that they made, it's the last one. I usually like you know stuff. Uh, first album, second albums, but I love their their early stuff. White Heat, White Light, White Heat is good. Self titled, of course. This legendary album, uh, the Andy Warhol self titled album is great. Uh, this is a box set here. Contains all their albums, uh, outtakes, live tracks, demos. Really good. It's just an amalgam of, of music. Okay. Um, the song we're talking about is um, Oh Sweet Nothing, okay? It's the uh, last song on side one. Uh, that song um, is especially in particular because that song wasn't sung by Lou Reed. Yeah, that song, lead singer on that song was Doug Yule, the bass player. But he was, he was a musician all around. I mean, he played bass, he played guitar, he played drums. Um, his brother actually plays drums on their last album. Doug Yule, I think, Doug Yule, yeah, okay, um, but he, um, I'm sorry, Doug played the bass on this one, Billy Yule was the drummer, his brother, okay, Maureen, I guess at the time was on, uh, a leave of absence, he, I guess she was taking care of family or something, was pregnant or something, but, um, she wasn't on the album, still part of the band, but wasn't on the album, but sounds great, okay, Oh Sweet Nothing is a, is a song that, takes me to a, to a Sunday, <laughs> uh, driving, you know, on a Sunday afternoon, Vegas, when everything is just like down and empty casinos and great song. Uh, the guitar lick on that, on that song is great. The guitar lead Doug did, really good. Okay. So check out that song. Um, that song again came out in, on this album. 1970 um, wasn't a single they actually had no singles off that album but they had two songs that got huge with uh, Lou Reed he took them to his solo career um, Sweet Jane which you can play here in the background um, and Rock and Roll which I love those two songs as well um, but um, there was no singles off this album Atlantic pushed the album um, as far as marketing, but there was, there was no singles. It's kind of kind of odd. I think they're already kind of going down at that time. They they weren't putting much effort. Uh, 
But Atlantic kind of was, I guess, but it kind of fell again, fell through the wayside. Uh, has, you know, Velvet Underground has a big following. Um, I delved into their music um, uh, a few years back. Uh, this box was actually given to me by, by my girlfriend uh, for my birthday a few years back. I loved it, loved it. Um, I have a couple of their vinyls. Um, I have a special vinyl from them that came out, which we're listening to here, you can hear it, uh, Max's Kansas City. Okay? This was the last ever um, live recording that Lou Reed did with them. This came out, I believe, in, it was recorded in 70, I think in August, it got released a little later, it got released a little later in 72, but um, Lou Reed, this was his last stint. They did a uh, residency at Max's. Max's is a legendary, was a legendary uh, venue, restaurant, bar, where everybody and their mom played there. Um, Velvet Underground being one of them. But look up the history on this place. It's great. Uh, but th this is a really, really good album. Recorded in mono. Uh, sounds really good for a tape recording back then that one of Warhol's uh, models did. Okay, But um, it's, it's really good. Check out that album. Okay. I got that album, I believe, at a record store. I just can't remember which one. Really good deal. I got it for like $8. <laughs> Colored vinyl, uh, released on Cotillion Records, or original label. Okay. But going back to Oh Sweet Nothing, uh, du sung by Doug Yule. Uh, he played the guitar on that on that track. Uh, great lead. And, you know, it's, it's a... A uh, unique song because it's not sung by Lou Reed. It's my personal favorite of theirs. I have a lot of songs that I like, but that song just strikes a chord with me. You know, it's kind of a slow, you know, not too fast um, track, kind of a, not exactly ballad, just a slow, slow, moderate, you know, rock. Um, to me, yeah, I it, but... the Grateful Dead influenced again a lot of bands, yeah, yeah. dark wave, uh, punk post-punk bands, um, even gothic, you know, even some hard rock metal bands, Black Sabbath, I believe, was a little bit influenced by their noise, garage rock. Um, I think the Velvet Underground, to me, is a band that's really good, sounds great live. Uh, live recordings sound really good. Not that their studio stuff is bad, but sometimes it just gets really noisy. And, and that's Lou Reed's, you know, Lou Reed, that, that was his style. Is, which is good but their their live recordings check them out really good check out if you get a chance max's um live can max's kansas city the, the, again they did a residency for like two months there can you imagine checking checking bands out there on a sunday you know just they're playing they would do two two sets it must have been amazing you know again everybody played there it was first uh uh, a place where all the poets and artists would hang out, you know, read their poetry, display their art, talk. And then Andy Warhol brought in the bands and stuff, Velvet being one of the first ones. Um, but yeah, yeah, this, uh, check it out, check it out. Um, a band who covered this song, uh, which I liked too, uh, was a little bit more refined, was the Black Crows. Uh, the Black Crows did it on a couple live albums, Cabin Fever, um, Obscure Tracks, Cabin Fever Live, check it out. And it's on one of their live recordings from 2009, uh, uh, live at the Fillmore. They did a, a cover, uh, their version of Oh Sweet Nothing, uh, which is uh, sounds great. The guitar lead sounds really good too. And I, they did a nine, nine and a half minutes uh, song. The Sonic thing's about six minutes um, studio loud tape. But the Black Crows version's pretty good. Check it out. I'll put both links on so you can check it out. Okay. Um, again, it's on their Cabin Fever live album, Live and Lost uh, live tracks, or Live at the Fillmore. But again, I'll put I'll put the uh, the links there. Okay. But yeah, check out uh, Velvet Underground, Oh Sweet Nothing. Okay. I hope you liked it. Put your comments on there, questions, uh, feedback, if you get a chance. Uh, all right, I hope you enjoyed, and keep on rocking out there with the obscure tracks. All right, I'll see you on the next one.